Thank you for this opportunity to present this talk. And I'll be dealing with hand infections. And uh, it's a huge topic. It's, uh, hardly can be covered in just 10 minutes. But I'll try to cover as much as possible. First, we'll go about the principles of management of hand infections. So first is the most important thing is your approach to the patient. And for that, you need to have a detailed history of the mechanism of injury, whether it's a road traffic accident, whether it's been an open fracture, whether it's been a rose thorn injury, or whether it's been a bite or anything like that. Then you need to do a detailed examination. You need to do the check for the lymphadenopathy, the swelling, and for the cannibal sign. We'll come to that. You need to take a detailed history of the comorbidities, especially gout, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and any other infections. Then you need to check for the systemic manifestations, whether there is any temperature, whether there's any fever, and whether there is any other problems. And then you do a full investigation, full blood count, ESR, CRP, blood cultures, and wound swab cultures. And never let a hand infection patient go without an x-ray. So because it's important to have an x-ray and to see for the radiological signs in there. Now for the management of infections. First, you need to have follow a protocol of strict elevation, then antibiotics, IV or oral. Then you need to hold the hand in optimal position in a functional position, that is. The drainage of the pus, if there is any, in from whichever space in the hand, will come into the discussion later. And continuous irrigation for some of the pus which is in, in there. And then active physiotherapy to get the function of the hand back in, back in normal function. Because it's important to commence the function early rather than late. And you need to find a good hand therapist for that because otherwise you will end up in a stiff hand. So this is all a, all a note about the common infections and the antibiotics which are normally used for the hand infections. The first line of antibiotics and the second line of antibiotics, you may get to get this in the handout, so don't try to copy this. Now coming to the individual infections, coming first to the pulp space infection. First is your paronychia, and then is a felon, and then is a herpetic whitlow. There is important to differentiate between the three, because for felon and paronychia, you need to drain them, whereas for herpetic whitlow, you can still go about by conservative management. For, for paronychia, you need to put a knife exactly in there and let the pass out and then put a warm soak and antibiotic and then start the function of the, the, the finger movements normally after three to four days. For felon, you need to drain the felon properly and preferably through a midline incision and then let the pass out and then let it heal normally. Now next is the flexor tenosynovitis, which is, the, this is the classical picture of the flexor tenosynovitis, in which you get the cannibal sign, the fusiform digit, the swelling, the pain on passive flexion and tenderness along the flexure sheath. In stage one, you can get the increased fluid in the sheath and there is a serous exuded. For that, you do a minimally invasive drainage and a catheter irrigation and that will generally take control of the infection. And besides, you start IV antibiotics as well. In stage two, there will be a cloudy purulent fluid with granulometer synovium. Then you still do a minimally invasive drainage with an indwelling catheter irrigation for 24 to 48 hours. And then if there is a further advanced stage, like the septic necrosis of the tendon sheath and the pulleys, then you do an extensile open debridement and possibly amputation, but still will with, withhold that till you have done a, f a few more debridements and done the irrigation properly. So this is about the irrigation drainage. As you can see, the needle here and the catheter, irrigation catheter here, and 
thus you need a continue to maintain this continuous irrigation now coming to the spaces in the hand because there will be web space infection and the deeper infections there is a mid spammer space and the thinner space which are in direct contact with the radial and ulna bursa so this is the picture where you can develop a cholestered abscess and uh, they can directly go into the radial and ulna bursa for that you need to drain these spaces properly so these are the in incisions which you can use to drain these spaces and these are the safe drainage incisions or a bit, bit more detailed about the incisions which you can use for drainage of different spaces in the finger and in the radial and ulna bursa now coming into the specific infection the infection it may be present as a septic arthritis which is the infection of the joint space with local destruction which needs urgent intervention because uh, it's an emergency you need to aspirate the joint in uh, early to diagnose what exact organism is uh, is the causative organism and then send for the cultures and wait for that them to, to use the antibiotics and you need to do the joint irrigation and put a drain for 24 to 48 hours wrist and metacarpal phalangeal joints should be approached dorsally then the in from septic arthritis you can develop an osteomyelitis or it can easily occur from penetrating injury contamination of open wound on flexure tenosynovitis the features will be infection pain erythema swelling elevated esr and crp there in on x-ray there will be periosteal reaction osteolysis sequestrum formation you have to drain the osteomyelitis Midaxial incision for phalangeal infection, dorsal incision for carpal and metacarpal incision. Surgery includes the removal of bone, the diseased bone, and the sequestra, leave a cortical window, and you can put some antibiotic impregnated cement in there. Now, a very specific type of injury are the bite injuries. They can be animal or human bite injuries. The animal bite represents the cat or dog bite. and generally cleaning the wound and adequate evaluation is absolutely necessary for proper evaluation or management of this pro of this and things now oral antibiotics or iv antibiotics should be commenced commenced and surgical debridement and irrigation should be done in those which who have of who have obviously purulent discharge now particularly for the human bite there are four varieties there is they can be self inflicted like Uh, a bite a traumatic amputation a full thickness bite wound or a clenched fist injury now it's important because there is a higher volume of bacterial flora especially from the oral cavity and there may be a tendon injury present which is very important to establish because you need to you may need to repair the tendon and you may need, you need to go for an extensive debridement so thorough clinical examination timing and treatment after bite should be noted and there may be serial debridement necessary for management of these infections so iv augmentin should be commenced depending on which organism has been causing it now there is another variety of infection which can be very serious which is the necrotizing fasciitis it can present as a cellulitis or it can be a, it is especially because of a combination of aerobic and anaerobic bacteria the bacterial enzymes produce tissue necrosis and there is an underlying myositis which spreads very rapidly and into into the tissue planes and there is a myo necrosis that there is a dishwasher water pass and the light green tinged fascia which is very characteristic of this type of infection there is extensive debridement which is necessary and the drainage is necessary along with iv antibiotics even when the best hands even in the best centers even with that the prognosis is really poor the mortality is 32.2% now coming to the fungal infections they can be vary from candida albicans infection from paronychia to deep tissue infections the fungal cultures must be obtained and the frequent it's mostly found in the housekeeping personnel those who have got uh, continuous exposure to water and moisture 
The drainage of pus, the scraping of the aponychium, putting the topical antifungal and it may ultimately lead to nail removal or marsupialization. For systemic disease, you need to use the systemic antifungals before co consider, consider the, their liver and hepato and renal toxicity into account and then you can start the systemic antifungals. Now there are mycobacterial infections as well, which is a slow and insidious process and it may form a rheumatoid arthritis like picture. So it may be very difficult to diagnose in the first stage. I'd to certainly go for a rheumatoid factor evaluation and also a joint aspirate to send for cultures and mycobacterial cultures. Because the signs of inflammation are generally absent, there may be a chronic, it may present as a chronic discharging sinus from the rest with radiological evidence of osteopenia and bone and joint destruction. That may be the first presenting feature. So the cutaneous infection can be treated with antimicrobacterial. However, the bony infection, you need to have, you need to debride the joint, you need to have a full surgical intervention and proper drainage of the joint. And finally, herpetic whitlow, the dentists are often involved because of its uh, occupational hazard. You, you treat patients with uh, herpes and then you get the infection. In older than 20, herpes simplex type 2 and old, younger than 20, herpes simplex type 1. The digit is painful and there are erythematous bulla formed. Normally, there is management is conservative. Generally, it's self-limiting, so identification is important from felon and paranychia, as, well, as we have said before. It may need systemic acyclovir if it's not responding to the normal treatment. And Zank test may support the diagnosis. Viral culture is usually unnecessary. And then you can, you can do a deroofing of the bulla and that can and uh, gradually give it in a soak and if unless there is an infection you generally don't need to give any antibiotics so this is how you treat herpetic fetlow thank you